Have you ever walked up to somebody and you just have a bad feeling around that person? Like there's just a feeling of something's not right. This can be a rich episode, just so you know. Today, we're gonna be talking about the law of attraction, what it is, how to use it, and how to actually attract everything that you want into your life. Now, before I dive into it, I understand. This might seem weird and woo-woo-y, and I completely understand that because I'm a very logical, sensible person. But when I go through this, and I'm very analytical as well, you're going to see what I mean by how the law of attraction works, whether you happen to be woo-woo-y or whether you happen to be a very analytical, science-based type person, this is gonna make sense to you no matter which one you are. And I'm gonna teach you how to use the law of attraction to get what it is that you want in your life. Now, I'll tell you this, I've been using it now for about 15 years, and I can tell you this, no matter what your stance is on the law of attraction, it works. If you take notes on this, if you use it, I'm gonna teach you how it works, how to use it in your life, and how to get what you want in life as well. On a basic sense, this is what the law of attraction says. It says that you can attract anything that you want into your life, but you need to believe in it to your core. And if you believe in it to your core, every single cell in your body, then you will get whatever that thing is. But that's the secret to it, is that you have to, you have, you have 50 trillion cells in your body right now, right? You have to get all of those cells to go towards that one thing. And the way that you control your 50 trillion cells is through the central voice, your thoughts. And that's what we're gonna go into. I'm gonna go much more in depth, but basically you will attract into your life what you think about the most. That's the easiest way to think of the law of attraction, but we're gonna go much more in depth than just that alone. Now, you may have seen the movie, The Secret. The Secret is on the law of attraction. I think it's a great movie. It's a great book, but I think it leaves a lot out. The way that The Secret seems to be for me is I'm going to sit down. I'm going to figure out what it is that I want. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to think about it all day long. And it's just going to the universe is just going to bring it into my life. And I think that that's part of it, but it's missing a lot. And that's what I want to dive into and there's no real explanation of how it works. So it makes it a lot easier to believe in something when you know exactly how it works, because then you go, okay, yeah, I can get behind this idea. You know, you can't just sit there and just meditate the rest of your life and try to meditate a million dollars into your bank account without actually getting up and doing something, right? So it requires you to, yes, the law of attraction, but also it requires action. You gotta do something. So we're gonna dive into that. And to understand the law of attraction, we must understand our bodies as they are. Our bodies, are molecular structures that are vibrating at a massive speed at all points in time. So you can look at my hand and my hand seems like a solid object, but my hand is not solid. It is actually vibrating. If you were to be able to look at my hand through a microscope, you're able to see all of the trillions of cells in my body, all of them moving at a specific rate, whatever that is. If you look at anything that you can see in your physical reality, everything is a vibrating structure. My desk, this podcasting mic, the camera that's recording it on, my computer that's recording this audio, everything is vibrating. It's just that everything is vibrating at different speeds. And we're constantly vibrating. Everything is. The difference between my body and my desk though, is that my desk is one constant speed, one constant vibration. My body, changes depending on my thoughts and my feelings. So, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of, of, of how this is going to make sense to you. Have you ever walked up to somebody and you just have a bad feeling around that person? Like there's just a feeling of something's not right, right? That is your body's vibration and their body's vibration coming into contact with each other and they're not in alignment in some sort of way. That's called destructive interference if you want to go deeper into it, right? But have you ever met somebody before and you don't know why, but you just connect to them and you get an incredible feeling around them? That is my body and their body, their fields coming together. I know it sounds weird. I get it for those guys that are analytical. Our fields coming together because your, your vibration of your body doesn't just stay within your skin, right? So we are in alignment. If I'm vibrating at a certain rate and that person's vibrating at a certain rate, I'm going to have good feelings. That's where the phrase good vibes come from. That's also where the phrase bad vibes come from. As you can tell whether something's right or right, wrong, you can tell whether someone is right or wrong based on basically how you feel. Now, in order to understand how the law of attraction works, we must understand two separate things. Number one is our conscious mind, which is the mind that you hold all of your thoughts in. And the other one is then your subconscious mind. So we're going to get really deep today. I hope you're ready, right? Your conscious mind is the mind in which you think, right? Your conscious mind is only about 5% of your thoughts throughout the day, 
Write everything you think about and you can only hold one thought at a time. Your subconscious mind is like your mind's filing cabinet. It doesn't know this is true, this is false. It just takes all of the information and stores it all away as if all of it is true. It doesn't decipher the information, it doesn't think about it, any of that stuff. But what's interesting is that your subconscious is in control of about 95% of your thoughts, your feelings, and the way that you see the world as well. So it's really important before we dive into the law of attraction a little bit more in depth is to actually understand the way your subconscious mind, which nobody tends to talk about when they talk about the secret and they talk about the law of attraction, how your subconscious mind actually dictates the law of attraction and what rate you're vibrating at. Now, you have to realize this. The subconscious mind, once again, just takes everything that you say and automatically stores it as true. So if you talk negatively about yourself in your head, if you talk trash to yourself, say, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid, then it's automatically going to take that conscious thought stored in the subconscious as true. So if you constantly just keep thinking this and thinking this and thinking this, that thought of I'm stupid over and over and over again now becomes a personality trait of somebody who is stupid. And now you actually believe at your core that you're stupid. If you think, oh, I'll never attract the right man or I'll never attract the right woman or, you know, all guys are players or any of those types of things, those thoughts will then store into your subconscious and you will take actions that line up with what your subconscious believes in. So after years and years and years of thoughts being away, being stored away from your conscious to your subconscious, you will develop a paradigm. A paradigm is what you believe is true. And it's usually in the subconscious, so you don't even think about it. It has shaped your life throughout the years. This, your program from your childhood is where your paradigm, your, that's actually what dictates what your paradigm is going to be. So if your paradigm is a, is a child, um, if it shapes the way that you view the world as an adult, it's everything. It's what you believe. It's what you don't believe. It's what you love. It's what you hate. It's the language you speak. If you believe in yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, if you talk down to yourself, if you're rich and successful now, if you're poor now, if you ever will be rich and successful, if you'll continue to fail in relationships, if you have you know, a successful one, the way that you raise your kids, your paradigm literally dictates everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you feel, everything your conscious mind, everything your subconscious mind, it dictates everything. So let me give you an example. If you were born poor as a kid, right, and your parents always got in fights about money and your parents were always in debt and they said stuff like money doesn't grow on trees and money's the root of all evil and you know in order to be rich and successful you have to screw people over then your brain's going to take that and take that and take that and take that and then it's going to consciously store it into your subconscious and now you've got a paradigm just around money itself of i have to screw people over i'm never going to be rich and successful you know um I have to do bad things to make money. Money's the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Now I've got a paradigm around money, which is going to change my perception of the view of money of the world. It's going to change my thoughts around money. It's going to change my vibration around money. And it's going to dictate the way that I either attract money or don't attract money or the actions that I take to go make money or the actions I take not to make money. So if you're poor now, as an example, if you're rich now, as an example, if you're good in relationships now, if you're bad in relationships, all of those are guided by your paradigm. And those were all programmed into you at some point in time when you were a kid. Now, that being said, when we're looking at the programming, we're looking at the conscious and the subconscious mind, we're looking at the paradigm, it's not something that you can just change overnight. It's not just something that happens quick and easy. It takes time, but believe me, it's worth putting time into and to actually start figuring these things out right? So ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to, in its simplest form, we're trying to affect and change all of the results that we have in our life. We're trying to affect our, our and change all of the results around our money, making more money if we want, our relationships, having better relationships, our happiness, our joy, our success, everything. And it all starts with what you think, right? And what you think, whether it's good or whether it's bad, goes into your subconscious and will eventually produce whatever re results you want in your life. Now, if you want to change your results, you're going to have to change your thinking, right? And all of your results typically line up with your paradigm. So let me give you an example. There's gonna be a lot. I promise you, I told you this is gonna be a big, this can be a rich episode, just so you know. Do you know somebody who has all of the education in the world? They have 
you know, degrees falling off the walls and they're getting another degree and another degree and another MBA and all this stuff, but they just can't seem to succeed. They just can't seem to figure it out. Do you know anybody like that? Have you ever heard of someone like that? Why do you think that is? Because they think that education is going to change them, but it's not. What actually changes and needs to change is their paradigm because they can get all of the education they want to in the world, but their paradigm hasn't, hasn't changed. Now, what does this have to do with the law of attraction? Your paradigm is in control of the frequency of vibration that you set off into the world, the frequency and the vibration that your body is at. So in order to change your vibration, you must change your frequency. In order to change your frequency, you have to understand how your programming works, how your paradigm works, and what is stored inside of your subconscious. And when I say change your frequency and your vibration, the easiest way to think of it is this. You know, if I'm inside of my car and I'm going for a drive and I have the AM station turned on in my car, my car will never pick up an FM station if I am tuned into an AM station, right? It won't happen because I'm in an AM station, not an FM station. So the same thing happens where if the law of attraction, the way that it works, if I have a poverty mindset, if I have a poverty paradigm, if my subconscious is being run by you know, these poverty thoughts and money's the root of all evil, you have to screw people over and you have to work all day in order to become successful. If I have that poverty mindset, then I'm going to send that, it's, it's in my thoughts, it's in my body, I'm vibrating in a poverty mindset frequency, I'm gonna send that out into the world, right? So an example of that would be all of the people, places, opportunities, and things that could get me out of my poverty mindset, I won't even notice them. Why? Because if someone comes in that could change my, or an opportunity comes in that says, oh, this could get me out of my poverty mindset, I'm not even going to recognize that it's something that could help me. I'm automatically going to push it away the same way that if I meet somebody and I'm not vibrating at the same frequency as them, I'm going to get bad vibes. So for instance, I might have a poverty mindset and the best freaking investment opportunity or the best business idea can come into my awareness, can come into my field, can come into my, you know, I can literally be sitting there and talking to somebody who's got the best business investment that can make me millions of dollars. If I'm vibrating as a, at, a, at a negative, you know, poverty mindset, I'm not even going to take that thing as an option. I'm going to be like, no, this isn't right. It doesn't feel right, which is usually how you can tell, you know, the frequency. It doesn't feel right. Why? Because I'm vibrating in poverty. If abundance in, in wealth comes into my life and starts to vibrate, I'm not going to be in line with it. There's going to be a part of my body that says, no, Rob, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Therefore, I will reject that person. I will reject the opportunity. I will reject everything we think so many times over and over and over and over and over again, men are cheaters, men will screw you over, you can't trust men. You know, this is just an example. It could go the other way for men to women, women to men. And you keep repeating that thing over and over and over inside of your head. What's going to happen is you're eventually going to, to create a paradigm around that. You're going to go from your, take it from your conscious thoughts, store it into your subconscious mind, which is going to change the frequency that you're vibrating at. And that's why so many people are like, I don't know why I keep dating men that are broken. I don't know why I keep dating men that are assholes. I don't know why I keep finding people who are screwing me over, who cheat on me, all of this stuff. It's because we tend to attract into our life, whatever it is that is going to line up with what we believe is true in our conscious mind, in our subconscious mind, in our paradigm, we are going to attract those things into our life. So if we, even if we consciously, even if you're a woman out there or even a man out there that just wants a, a really good man, you're still going to attract the ones that are not good for you if you're always vibrating at the frequency of men will screw you over. Same way for men, for women, for all of this stuff. You know, you can switch out all of the genders and any way that you want to. It just makes sense though, doesn't it? So the same example, if I'm a, a woman who wants a really good man, but I've been screwed over and my mom said things when I was younger, when a really good man comes into my life, I won't even vibe with them or be attracted to them in any sort of way because they don't line up with the reality of the way that I see the world. I'm only going to be attracted to the people who reinforce my paradigm of the way that I see the world. So that's why, you know, someone comes in, they could be really good for them. And you're like, why don't you see your friend maybe? And you're just like, why doesn't she like him? Like he's perfect for her. Why? Because he, as a really good man, doesn't reinforce her belief paradigm consciously and subconsciously of the world of men are assholes, men screw you over, men are cheaters. Why does she always end up with those types of people? Because that's what she believes 
at a, in a, a, a thought and at a cellular level that men actually are. This is what meditation's for. This is what going out and actually becoming aware of these things is for, is so you can start to reprogram yourself. You realize, what station am I tuned into? What station are you tuned into? In your relationships, in your wealth, in your business, in your life, in your thinking about yourself, what station are you tuned into? Because whatever station, if I'm tuned into 98.7 FM, I'm only going to get 98.7 FM. I'm not going to get 710 AM if I'm tuned into 98.7 FM. So I've got to pay attention to, man, what do I actually consciously and subconsciously think is true about money, about business, about relationships, about wealth, about happiness, about abundance, about scarcity, all of these things, because that's going to dictate where my body is vibrating at. And if something vibes with me, which is usually going to, you know, that's called uh, constructive interference versus destructive interference then I'm going to actually understand that I'm only noticing and attracting things into my life that line up with the way that I actually truthfully, deep down at a cellular level, believe the, world, the way that the world is. So that's why you can consciously want success, but then you're not taking any action. That's why you can consciously want to have the best relationship, but you're screwing them all up or finding the wrong person. That's why you can consciously want to have a successful business, but you're freaking sleeping in and you're bringing the wrong business partners in and all of these things are happening is because you have to become aware, not only just of your conscious thoughts, but of your subconscious thoughts and your paradigm around all of that, because that's 95% of what you think about. And it doesn't happen overnight. Like I can't just go, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm gonna change my frequency and I'm just a different person. You know, you can try to work on it every single day, but you have to res you have to literally brainwash yourself into believing that. That's why I have an episode, you know, that's, you know, brainwash your, uh, your way to success, or you have to brainwash yourself to change your paradigm. And that's brainwash yourself to be successful. That episode that I did, talks about how you have to spend every single moment, every downtime brainwashing yourself with what it is that you actually truly want to do in this world. So if you don't see results right away, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Just realize it takes time for you to reprogram yourself. If you're 35 years old, you've got 35 years of programming. It might take more than a couple weeks to start to switch your programming, start to switch your paradigm. And remember that we're all programmed from a young age. So our, our, our job now as adults is to go back, look at what our, para our paradigm is, look at what our programming was from a young age, ask ourselves, does that line up with the future that I want for myself? And if it doesn't, then I need to consciously change it and also subconsciously change it because my, it starts with my thoughts, which is my conscious mind. They're stored into my subconscious mind. That changes my vibration, which then changes what I attract in my life. That's why if I have a poverty mindset, once again, and a great business opportunity, opportunity comes into my awareness, comes into my life, I will be like, no, it just doesn't feel right. It, it's not that it doesn't feel right because it's not right for you. It doesn't feel right because it's actually not vibrationally matching where you are. It's too freaking abundant for you for where you are right now. So if you want something in your life, are you tuned into it? Think about that for a second. If I want something in my life, I need to be tuned into that freaking thing. If you want something in your life, are you tuned into that station? If you want something in your life, you need to be tuned into that, st that, that station so that you can start attracting it into your life. You know, the one thing that I don't like about the secret is that it acts like, you know what? I, if I want to have the best relationship in the world and attract the best man or the best woman into my life, I need to sit there and I need to meditate it into my life and meditate and meditate and meditate. And eventually that man will just show up at my door. No, you have to literally after working on yourself, after working on the programming, after diving into what your paradigm is, you have to get off your ass and actually take action. The, the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams is not going to come knocking on your door while you're meditating and you're just going to attract him or her into your life. The missing piece a lot of times is that you have to actually get up and take action. Okay, I'm going to program my thoughts, my feelings, which is my head, my heart, my body, to go and find this person that I want or to find that wealth that I want or to find whatever it is that I want. And then I'm going to get my physical vibrating body and put it out into the world to be able to actually go find these things. That's what I always find is missing when people talk about the law of attraction is what I like to call the law of action. You got to get your ass up and get moving. You got to do something. You got your mind, you're working on your mind, but is your body out there in the actual physical universe going where you can talk to other people of the opposite sex, right? 
around people who happen to have the business that you want. So if I want to attract the perfect woman into my life, right? And, uh, and I'm sitting there, if, if you're out there, you're a single guy and you're like, I want to attract the perfect woman. I'm just ready to, I'm ready to stop playing games. I want to attract her. If you're, that's what you're thinking, right? You can meditate on her all day long, but she's not going to come knocking at your door. So you got to meditate, meditate, you know, get the vibration. How do you feel about it? Are you starting to actually feel that maybe a real relationship is something that you're, you're going to settle into? Like, is your body at that vibrational frequency? And, and it sounds weird. I understand the vibrational frequency and all that stuff. But you can ask yourself, do I feel ready to attract the right person? Do I feel ready to bring in the right person into my life? And you can feel in your body the relaxed state that it can get into. Then your physical body, you've actually got to leave your house, right? You've got to leave your house and go to places where you think that person might be. And what happens is whether you realize it or not, the same way that you're vibing with somebody, they also need to be vibing with you. So you might might find somebody right now and they might be the perfect person for you, but because you haven't changed your vibrational frequency to them, it doesn't feel right. So if you work on yourself, that's why they always say, if you want to, if you want to find the perfect person, become that perfect person first, because then you're going to match them vibrationally. And then it's going to be good vibes between the two of you, constructive interference versus destructive interference, AKA bad vibes. So you can't just meditate that person into your life, right? Same way that if you want to have a million dollars in your bank account, you need to program and consciously think about this money that you want to make. And you've got to consciously bring even more about mastering your mind. Click right here and watch this video as well. Good morning, everybody. Today's going to be a beautiful day. Do you want to go back to dreaming or do you want to go to actually creating your dreams?